Garrett Johnson, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Tell us about your organization. The mission statement of Fight the New Drug is to educate individuals, um, give them an opportunity to make an educated decision regarding the harmful effects of pornography. And the way we go about that is using science, facts, and personal accounts. Our goal is to help people consider before consuming. So you know here in Canada, the New York Times writer, uh, Nicholas Kristof, broke the story um, about images and videos of uh, drugged women, girls, even boys being raped, and his story made international headlines, and the major credit card companies did an investigation and stopped users from being able to use their credit cards for the uh, Montreal companies. Do you think that's just a drop in the bucket or a big win against the porn industry? I would, I would say that this is a massive win. If, uh, if you think about the victims um, and them having their abuse broadcasted to the world, I think it was really good what Pornhub did. Um, it was unfortunate that they, you know, it, it took years and years and it took um, a lot of victims suffering and speaking out and being willing to use their, their voice and their name and their face. And then Nicholas Kristoff, his, his piece was wonderful. And I thought that, uh, you know, Discover Card, Visa, MasterCard, I think from their standpoint, you know, it was just they were, what they were broadcasting was a liability. So in some ways, I think it was a huge win because they did respond. Um, they did remove, I think it was two thirds of their content off of Pornhub, which was about 10 million videos. And um, they also took off the download feature. So that will eliminate a lot of abuse and perpetuating that uh, non-consensual sexually explicit material or uh, you know child sexual abuse images. So I think at the same time, yeah, it's a big win. And at the same time, it's just kind of a drop in the bucket, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So tell us, Garrett, where does all of this originate? Certainly, um, sex addiction is not new. It's um, more proliferated because of the internet, because of digital. Um, it's been around. But why now is the fight so, so important? Is it because of the digital age? We as a, an organization, I think it's important to mention that we're non-religious and non-legislative. Um, so our goal is to not, um, we're not trying to eliminate pornography. Um, obviously the illegal kinds, we're all about those justice being brought about those types of pornography. But yeah, I think that when you look at our, the name of our, our organization, Fight the New Drug, um, the, our, one argument we hear is, well, porn has been around forever. Compulsive sexual behavior has been around for years, you know? So the new part is the technology part. Um, if you look at the, um, there's a nonprofit in Minnesota and they consider there's a couple risk factors when it comes to developing compulsive sexual behavior. And the risk factors are ease of access and privacy. And so if you think about because of technology um, people are more prone today to develop a, a compulsive sexual behavior uh, and unwanted porn use. So, How do you attract the celebrities that you do whose lives are changed? They come to you, you seek them out. How does, because there's so many top celebs bravely sharing their stories of how they've yeah. conquered this incredibly difficult thing. Yeah, I think that it's something that we are starting to uh, we're starting to know how to talk about it as a society instead of just putting our head in the sand. And um, so we feel fortunate, you know, we're all in this together. We're all, there's other organizations, not just Fight the New Drug. And there's so many people around the world that are speaking out about this. To answer your question about celebrities, um, I think it's that we rely on them and they kind of rely on us and other organizations like I said, we're kind of in it together. So, um, you know, I think that we're just trying to make people feel comfortable talking about this challenge that people have. And despite um, race or gender or um, 
political affiliation or if you're a celebrity or not, the harmful effects of pornography don't discriminate. So can you describe that? What are the harmful, what's the science on the brain and the connection there? I think one way to look at it is if you think about a trail and someone's trail running on a newly developed trail, the trail, you know, it's not, it's not developed yet. The more that a person and the more the traffic that they have on that trail, the more permanent that trail becomes. And you can compare that to our brain, that there's pathways in within our brain. And the more we use that pathway, the easier it becomes to use it, um, the more permanent it becomes. And so when it comes to pornography consumption, it is something that uh, is literally changing the brain and, um, and therefore influencing behavior and attitudes and mindsets. Um, another way to look at it is flow. Like you, the scientists consider the state of flow, like this intense focus. And athletes get into a state of flow when they're playing. Um, but there's then been studies that show that when someone's consuming pornography, their state of flow, their intense focus is, is there and it, it is, it takes priority. And so when we're talking about a compulsive behavior, if you're defining the word compulsive, it's that the urge is stronger than your will to resist. And so what's, what's happening with some people, not everyone, but some people are enjoying it less, but wanting it more. And so there's a compulsive aspect to it. Hmm. Do you have experience in this Garrett? Yeah. So I heard about fight the new drug about, five or six years ago. And I went to a presentation. Uh, we do live presentations around the world. And it was a community event. And um, it resonated with me. I think at that time, no, I don't think I, I at that time, I had a compulsive behavior around consuming pornography. And so I definitely have a personal account where I can also I have that. So I have the studies that I've looked at the research that's there. Um, and then my personal account. So. And so how did you get out of your personal account eventually? You know, it's kind of a unique experience. I was married. I still am married to that same individual. And um, we had two kids at the time and I was consuming pornography behind um, my partner's back without, without my partner knowing. And, um, you know, it was six years of marriage of that without her knowing about my consumption of pornography. And so I finally told the truth and then I wanted to build awareness around this. And so because fight the new drug was what sparked my, um, my honesty and my road toward recovery, I decided to do a project for them. So I, I was turning 30 years old. And so I ran 30 marathons in 30 days wearing handcuffs. And then I uh, rode my bicycle across the United States dragging chains. Wow. So, so this was penance or what was it? The, the project, the marathons <clears throat> was, uh, I, I named that project 30 and 30 in handcuffs. And then the, um, the handcuffs represented the, the addictive nature of pornography, the restriction, um, the compulsive behavior. And then the coast to coast in chains, it represented the heaviness of addiction and recovery. And the cool thing was, so I rode with chains dragging behind my bike. And by day 21, the carabiners that held the chains to my bike, the carabiners had worn away because of the friction. And so at day 21, all of the chains had been removed and I was able to finish. Um, I rode from Virginia to San Francisco. So I was able to finish without any chains. And so it just shows recovery. It shows that recovery is possible. It's symbolism there of that there is hope, even though sometimes you do feel hopeless or stuck. Is, is there a lot of aggression and anger in pornography? Yeah, you don't have to look very far on mainstream internet porn to see those types of behaviors. And um, that's one of the misconceptions about pornography. If you're talking to someone who, um, who grew up in a time where it was just magazines and videos, then oftentimes they think that pornography is just uh, people with no clothes on, you know, but today, Pornography is much different and um, 
it is more aggressive, more violent, more demeaning, more degrading than ever before in history. And, um, and that is influencing us. So, so you look at if the average age of first time exposure, a lot of studies show that it's around the age of 11 is the age of first time exposure. And then you think about the free, very accessible, um, very private mainstream internet porn that these people are consuming, these kids are consuming. Um, it's, it's, it has some negative effects on them for sure. I've heard so many people t share their stories and uh, many of them say, well, it was an internal wound from childhood or it was something that happened to me, you know, but I just, I, 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 they're oftentimes they don't finish their thought or they're not able to pinpoint something in childhood that happened to them that predisposed them maybe to what you're talking about, the anger, the aggression, the violence, the consumption, the uh, constant um, compulsion. Yeah. yeah, I think that there's some common things that do happen uh, that can influence in negative ways. It's gonna be like very rigid or disengaged families. I think those two polar opposite ends can have negative effects. Um, I think that uh, neglection is going to be one that is going to have negative effects on children. Um, Trangulation is another one. Um, any type. Trangulation meaning that um, when a parent crosses a boundary and cross and kind of a, leans on their kid in an emotional way, and when they should be leaning on their significant other or someone else that's an adult. I think that's, I'm not a professional in regards to, I'm not a therapist, um, but that's my simple understanding of it, so. Isn't it called parentification? Like when the child becomes the parent? Yeah, that can be, yeah. It's very similar to that, I'm sure. And I'm sure they intertwine in a lot of ways. And then any type of physical or um, verbal abuse, you know, it leaves that, those wounds, those traumas. And I think at the end of the day, we all want to feel loved. Um, we all want to feel cared for. We all want to feel seen. And um, so I think that sometimes when we don't have those things as a child or we have traumas as a child, we'll turn to other places to get some instant gratification. Right. Well, well said. Well said. We're Neither of us are therapists or experts, but it's good that we can have a open conversation. Right. Um, okay, so what do you say to your detractors? So it's kind of crazy because you're out there like really fighting the new drug, <laughs> going to schools, going to public schools, helping people out. And uh, so many people of all walks of life are sharing their stories of healing and getting healed. I suppose maybe we're not always healed um, instantly or forever. It's a life journey. But um, so what do you say to your detractors who say that it's drawing too much attention? Yeah, it's a tough thing. You know, we are a movement for love. And, um, you know, the name of our organization is Fight the New Drug. And sometimes that can sound aggressive, like fight the new drug, you know, like we're, we're opposing sides. And I guess in some cases we are opposing if someone thinks that pornography is not harmful or doesn't acknowledge the harmful effects, um, then we are opposing. But um, we have a fighter pledge and we try to encourage all of our fighters. We call them fighters. It's our followers around the world. We have over, you know, 6 million followers across our social media platforms. And we try to encourage our fighters to incorporate certain attributes. And some of those attributes are encouraging, understanding, accepting, open-minded, loving. And um, yeah. And so I think that for, for me, I would, you know, I, I enjoy having discussions about this as long as, you know, both parties can listen and talk and ask questions and really engage in a good conversation. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So last question. I love your podcast. How, what's your most fascinating interview? Impossible to answer. I know, but yeah, that's a tough one. You know, there, every one of them, there's all these there's all these moments during every conversation where I have these aha moments and I leave kind of in a heavy state because some of these conversations are heavy. I also leave inspired. Just the most recent one, one of the most recent ones I had was with a uh, former performer 
who was in the industry for five years and he was nominated and won the top male performer in, in porn. And um, he left the industry after making, he made, you know, a million dollars over the course of five years and he decided to leave. And so it was interesting to figure out he was one of the, he was the top 5% um, in regards to male performers. And so it was interesting to learn why he left and what he's doing since and the challenges that he faced because of his past. Um, yeah, it was, it was inspiring. His name's Joshua Broom. So shout out to Joshua Broom. You can look up his story. And so that's just amazing that you're out there doing what you're doing. And so thank you very much for taking yeah. the time with us. Yeah, we feel fortunate for people like you guys and other organizations that are in this um, same area and all, all of the people out there, the fighters who are starting conversations in healthy ways with love and acceptance and encouragement. So I uh, thank you guys for having us today. Thanks so much, Garrett.